So um, I alerted you to the existence of this show um, last year when I read the book. Yeah, you were reading this book. Yeah, so when I first told you that such a show will exist, you said, why would they write a fictional story about Fleetwood Mac when the real Fleetwood Mac story is so much more interesting? True. Um, But the official... That's now how they promoted the book, nor the show. So that's just a fan sort of thing. Like, you know, but nothing is officially, they never promoted it that way. Mm-hmm. So some of the, I mean, it's an interesting show. Yeah. Uh, it's entertaining. Mm-hmm. You know, I have my complaints like the uh, uh, Billy. Mm-hmm. Billy Dunn is constantly grumpy. Yeah. Um, apparently, all of them play music. And the all, actors, yeah. yeah. So they play yeah. the instruments that yeah. they play in the band. Mm-hmm. You know, it's fun. Some of the songs are good. I don't know how 70s they really are. Right. They sound more 90s, right? They sound more yeah, 90s. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. they sound like 90s songs. And there's yeah. some. There's even like a weird Tom Waits <laughs> kind of style song. I don't know how 70s they are, except mm-hmm. that they got the snare sound and the bass sound. Right. Those sounds are, are definitely there. Mm-hmm. It feels like, again, because it's a it's a romantic story, not a music story, that they're having arguments that musicians don't have yeah. in ways that musicians don't have them. Yeah. No, like, no, no. I, I totally get it. I, for me, um, this is a millennial Pinterest Instagram rendition of what a 70s band. <laughs> <laughs> well, when, that's not good. I think I like it because I'm a millennial Pinterest. Okay. I am of that generation. Like, I think the author and I are the exact same age or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and t- so I, I take it with a bit of fantasy and a grain of salt. Okay. But you were alive during the 70s. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry, but like, I think... Well, also, just yeah. like if we could take, you know, you could take any band as, a, as an example. But mm-hmm. you could take these 70s bands yeah. as an example. Um, it's obvious, like, there's not... You have to go with Fleetwood Mac because there's not many bands like this, I think. They are in rehearsal fighting with each other as if they're office co-workers. Mm-hmm. It's not the way it works if you're having a fight with your writer, right. your co-writer. Right. What you're going to do is you're going to get through it. Right. All of the fights that they have in the band mm-hmm. are real. Mm-hmm. And they're over romantic things and they're over ego and they're over... Uh, you know, competition for songs mm-hmm. and, you know, singing to each other through the songs, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and getting their shit out. That's that's all real. But there was never anything in Fleetwood Mac that was going to override the integrity of the band. Yeah, I and think the Stevie success N- of the Nicks, band. Um, actually st- said that she in said an interview. That, yeah. Well, she said that to Lindsay. She said, no matter mm-hmm. what happens with us... Right. Nothing's going to fuck up this band. Right. And I think Lindsay agreed. Yeah. And this is the interesting thing with their relationship mm-hmm. is they let it go. And mm-hmm. I think that they both know that the band is secure because that's their cash cow, right? Yeah, yeah. They it's know like that running it's a business. Yeah. yeah. They know it's secure, that it, they're never going to mm-hmm. break up. Mm-hmm. And so they let it all out. Yeah, okay. And they let it out publicly. Here, it's just... Only romantic. Mm-hmm. Here it's, I hate you and therefore I'm in love with you. Yeah, yeah. Which is a very familiar way of going. It's just so it's just so funny to see it dramatized like this mm-hmm. in a TV show. And it is, it's, it's a cute and funny show. Like it's, it's a cute, yeah. in a, you know, you know, when you say that in a condescending mm-hmm. way, like it's cute. Yeah. It's cute. Um, but uh, I am kind of impressed with the music. I didn't good. expect it yeah. to be as good as it is. Yeah. Um, it's good and 90s I think, music. Yeah, it's good 90s <laughs> music. And also, I admire the decision of the producers or whoever made this decision to cast um, actors who play the instruments instead of having them like mime the yeah. shit because I cannot stand the miming yeah. of the guitar playing, especially. Right. Or all the drumming. Of, all of or, the music feels real. It, yeah. It, it comes it comes across as as real yeah know? yeah you know i had a thought while i was watching this most recent episode mm-hmm. um you know the movie singles right mm-hmm. so we did a podcast on the mm-hmm. movie singles uh, a while ago and w- something we didn't talk about is that how singles eventually became the tv show friends did you know this i didn't know that so they came to cameron crow who wrote and directed singles mm-hmm. and said 
can we make a TV show out of this? Interesting. And he said, no. And so Marta Kaufman Crane or whatever uh, her name is, um, and whoever the other guy is. Kevin Bright. You should know who Kevin Bright Bright is because he took Sarah in, our foster border collie. What? You didn't know this? No. So... um, The co-producer of Friends? Yes, runs Dove. That's why I sent Sarah. Oh, yeah, because she's is, going to. So this to is why you said you wanted Jennifer Aniston to. Have... That yes, that's okay, the yeah you, yeah I yeah. You were just being... <laughs> anyway, we are grateful. We are deeply grateful. No, I, I love Friends. Then now, mm-hmm. fr- so Cameron Crowe's like, yeah, I know, I kind of fucked that up. Mm-hmm. But now from Friends, it almost feels like this is back to singles mm. in a way, from a Friends model and a Friends way of doing things. Oh, because it's like. It's like Ross and Rachel. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. I mean, I, you know, Weird I'm sure it's... Vi- no, I, I'm sure it's all related. Considering Maybe that, so. like, all of the... Like, the author and the producers mm-hmm. are all millennials. Yeah, you right. know? Like, we, yeah, we all grow, like grew up TV on show. this, you know, yeah. this shit. Yeah, so I think it's a cute show. Um, it's not a masterpiece. No, it's fun. I'm enjoying it. I think Riley Keough is a masterpiece. She's great. I'm I'm like really in love with her. Yeah, I I think she's fantastic in so many ways. I didn't even know she could sing before this and she was still, you know, fantastic. But I think her singing just like really blew me away. She's got a look about her too. She's absolutely magnetic and she's not traditionally beautiful. Um, She kind of looks like Elvis. That's kind of crazy if a you little, think. A little. Yeah, yeah. She looks a lot like her mother, I think. Yes. Yeah. But, but she also has that wide-eyed thing that the Presleys don't have. Yeah, she's right? got an intensity about yeah. her. Um, and I, yeah, and I really like her performance. Mm-hmm. And I know you and I disagree on a, another character who we talked about before. Simone. Uh, Simone. Yeah. So in episode five, if you're not caught up... Mm-hmm. Um, there's this great section in, in Greece mm-hmm. where uh, Daisy gets married to this Irish guy. Yeah. And her friend Simone comes for the wedding. And then Simone tries to tell her that she's living a lie. Mm-hmm. I was like, <laughs> and then she starts telling her things to her mm-hmm. that are total projections of her own interests. Yeah, I agree, but I also think that she knew, she knows Daisy well enough to know that Daisy can't be happy forever in that island in Greece. Yeah, with... I don't know if I believe that. Um, it, 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 let me let mm-hmm. me argue the, the mm-hmm. thing, the point. I think that a lot of things like addiction and right. are sort of the problems we have when our, with our psyches and mm-hmm. the things that we deal with is environmental. And I think having Daisy True. in that situation is what makes her uh, kind of unhinged and mm-hmm. dangerous to herself. So being in Greece and marrying this guy, it's it's not a if she's delusional, it's you know it's not a bad delusion. Yeah, I yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. I mean, we all live our delusions. Mm-hmm. I suppose that it need you know obviously the story needs that kind mm-hmm. of thing but i just thought it was very selfish for her friend Mm -hmm. to say this is who you are you need to come back to this lifestyle right because you want to be a rock star i never thought that daisy really wanted to be a rock star i think that simone wants to be a star yeah so the the thing about daisy is that and i think um a lot of stars are probably like this it's the i do but i don't want to be a rock Mm, star kind of thing um i think you know Kurt Cobain was like this. Oh, and that's, sure. Yeah. Um, and I think they love connecting with people. They love the music. You have to oh, love, love the music yeah. in order to be a star. Mm-hmm. Like, you have to love it first. Sure. But I think also you kind of have to not love the spotlight in order to love the music to that level. Do you see what I mean? Like there's something about songwriting and honing your craft that requires stillness and like sort of like, you know, solitude and silence. Mm-hmm. And you can't enjoy, you know, the parties and the attention and the spotlight all the time mm-hmm. and also feel those things. 
sense. But I think I that just... there's an introverted element to this. And so Daisy is so you enjoy, a bit, yeah. yeah. So you enjoy mm-hmm. the spotlight mm-hmm. as much as it can make you kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe crazy is the wrong word. But kind of make you kind of swept up in the chaos of things. It's definitely a double-edged sword. Mm-hmm. I definitely um, understand. I've never been there quite there but um even close but i do understand how that can happen Mm -hmm. i would say that the two lead characters Mm -hmm. very have a lot of chemistry i know you have maybe some problems with the with the main guy i don't think he is billy dunn enough but i do understand why he is he was casted but i didn't imagine billy dunn to be like him okay Mm -hmm. yeah that's sometimes a problem with the book yeah yeah I think their chemistry is good. I think mm. their chemistry is better than him. Let me put it that way. Yeah, yeah. Than him alone. Yeah. Like it was just so, there was something comical about their, I think it was the fourth episode when they're trying to write songs together. Yeah. It was good uh-huh. and it was interesting and it was entertaining, but it was also weird. Like people don't do things like that when they're writing songs. No, together. absolutely <laughs> not. Yeah. There was you get a through lot of it, weird you do shit. it, you do yeah. the work. Mm-hmm. You don't, you don't have, I hate you fights in, in the middle of writing a song. Right, you know? right. You kind of go along with it and you support each other. Mm. Even if you hate each other, I think. I think that's part of it. Like, imagine two songwriters together. And yeah. they've been together yeah, for a for long sure. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They maybe don't like each other anymore, mm. but they're, there's something... You know, mm. I've been in songwriting sessions and mm-hmm. you kind of support each other because you're very awkward. You don't want to step on someone else's ego. Right. So you have to be sensitive mm-hmm. and say, oh, well, how about, you know, you want to see someone really sensitive and really kind of trying hard to say the right thing mm-hmm. put a couple of songwriters together yeah and this just played off again like a couple of co-workers at an office where there's nothing at stake right right yeah yeah i i i don't know i've written songs with people including a spouse that's not you <laughs> my ex-spouse mm-hmm. and uh it, it certainly did not go that way what way in, in like in the show yeah, you know, I don't think yeah, it does. Go it well. really didn't. Yeah, I think you're right, but it could also go. I mean, it's so uh, the fragility of songwriting. That's exactly what uh, I'm saying. You yeah. don't, you don't yell at each other. Yeah, unless you want to like really never see them again. Yeah. yeah. But again, I think this is all in service to what is basically a romantic show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You just got back from Australia, yes. mm-hmm. and I think that. I had an idea for our next show yep. because you went to your best friend's wedding. My best friend's wedding, yeah. And I thought, because I've never seen it, mm-hmm. that we should do our next podcast on The Wedding Singer. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. And we can yeah. talk about your trip to Australia a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Sound good? It sounds great. Mm-hmm. All right.